Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys. Today we've got a festive type of book talk. A holiday book talk if you will. And today we are talking about The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson. This book was released this year and I believe it is the first Peter Swanson book that I've read. I picked it up because I like the idea of a mystery slash thriller set at Christmas time. And this is very much set at Christmas time. Like everything, the decorations, they're in a big cozy house. There's big extravagant dinners. Like it's very festive. Um, and it's also a bit of a murder mystery. And that sounded really fun to me. Um, I hadn't read one of these before, like a thriller set at Christmas. Earlier this year, I think in October, I read Christmas and Other Horrors, which is an anthology of horror stories, and I loved that. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, let's see, let's see where to go. Because as you know, during the rest of the year on this channel, I read a lot of mysteries and thrillers and horror. So when I got to the end of this book, I saw that the author had a little section called why I decided to write this book, and it, it clocks in short. It's just under 100 pages. And in that blurb he says he loved the idea of writing a Christmas novella that you can pick up maybe on Christmas Eve after all the visiting's done and the dishes are done and you just want to cozy up with one last drink before bed. And you can do that. And you can. This took me about two hours to read because I, I kept stopping. You know, you, gotta, you got things to do. So I kept taking little breaks. So you could read it in under two hours if you just stuck to it. And... Let's get into it. First I'll give you the brief synopsis, then we're going to go into the details. But I'll give you a spoiler warning, don't you worry. So in case you don't want to read it, but you're interested, you can stick around for those. If not, definitely go and pick it up. I bet if you ordered it on Amazon, it would arrive in plenty of time for Christmas. <laughs> anyway, so this book starts off with a woman. She's in New York City, in her apartment, and... Uh, we know Christmas is coming and we know that she's been invited to friends houses for Christmas but she's declined those invitations she wants to stay home and we get the feeling that she always wants to stay home alone for Christmas she's gonna do her own thing and that's just the way that she likes it and so she decides she's gonna clean out her closet and when she's in there she's going through boxes trying to get rid of some of the you know the stuff we all accumulate over the years she finds an old diary and she sits down and she begins to read it. And so we begin to read it. And the first half of this book is that diary. And we learn that it, the diary was written in 1989 and it's about a young American girl who goes to London for a year to go to school. And when she's there, she gets invited to one of her classmates home for Christmas because this girl, we don't know her name until past the halfway point. So our narrator, our diarist, <laughs> um, she's, she has no family back in America. She never knew her dad and her mother has since passed away. And so she gets an invite from a girl who she wouldn't really consider a close friend, but she's excited by this invitation because she knows this girl lives in this fancy manor on the, English countryside and she's excited to go and spend like what she considers or what she hopes will be like a traditional English Christmas with a new friend. So as we're reading her diary entries we're getting to spend this time with her. We know that she's going to be spending a week there. Um, she takes the train up and then when she gets there she meets her friend's brother who picks her up at the train station and instantly she's smitten. His name is Adam <laughs> and her friend's name is Emma and they're twins. And one night shortly after she arrives, they go out to a pub and a woman comes into the pub and she is acting very shocked when she sees our narrator. And she's like, what is going on? <laughs> and we learn from there that a few months ago, at the end of the summer, a girl was murdered in that village and our narrator bears a striking resemblance to her. So much so that when the woman who was shocked saw her, we learned that that woman was the deceased girl's mother, 
she was literally shook by seeing this this girl who looks so much like her daughter. So from there it's sort of an unraveling of what had happened earlier in that year during the summer because we learned that um, Emma's brother Adam had been a suspect because he had been seeing her but he had had an alibi and so that's kind of where things got left off. So along with the narrator we're trying to find out what had happened while well, she is also falling in love with this brother even though she doesn't know him at all. She just thinks he's really cute but they spend no time together practically. <laughs> So that's where I'm going to leave it because this book is very short. So if we talk any more about it, well, that's where I'm going to leave it with no spoilers. So if you want a nice, short, quick read, definitely give it a go. I think I'm going to give it three and a half to four stars. I really liked it. There were some things that I was kind of like, mm. <laughs> that's a little convenient, but I did, I did really enjoy it. And I really liked the ending actually. So definitely pick it up again, very short but a good read and uh, quick. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another vlog. Okay, so as things are carrying on, we, we learn that like the twins' parents are just, they're just terrible people. We start to wonder like, what's going on <laughs> with any of these people? And through the diary entries, we learn that when the narrator first met Emma, Emma had told her that she had a crush on this guy at school. And the narrator had drunkenly hooked up with him like a few days or weeks later, and Emma knew about it. So you start to think like maybe Emma has invited her here for nefarious reasons. <laughs> and um, while well, that does end up being true, it doesn't really have too much to do with that boy she had a crush on. Anyway, as time goes on, we learn that... Okay, well, first of all, as the first part of the book is ending, the narrator's having a great time. She ends up kissing Adam one night at a pub after Emma and Adam take her out for this magnificent dinner at this beautiful restaurant. And then one day, when the narrator is walking back to the house, she sees this weird guy in a like a Santa Claus mask and he like threatens her with his like and she runs back to the house. Then a few days later Emma says that she has also like she comes running back to the house after she went to get milk and she's like I also saw that guy. And then so later that night it's Christmas Eve now later that night even though um, Emma has had a fright Okay, well, hang on, let me, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. So the night before, Adam had left because him and his father had a big blowout. So now it's the next evening. Emma just got the fright. She's talking to the narrator and she's like, I probably shouldn't tell you this. So at this point, the narrator has confessed her feelings for Adam to Emma. And she's like, well, listen, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but he's going to be in town tonight. And the narrator's like, oh, coming to the house. And Emma's like, nope, no, nope, not coming to the house. Um, but he's going to be at the pub. And even though they're both kind of freaked out, they're like, you know what, we can, let's just do it. We'll stick together. Nothing bad will happen. And that's where the journal entry leave off. That's the last one. Then we switch to the present day to the woman who had been cleaning her closet. And we see a newspaper article that had been tucked inside the journal. And it's from that Christmas night. And it says like grizzly murder in small town. And we learned that when the two girls had been walking home, they were attacked. And one of them, the narrator, was killed. And Emma ended up spending time in the hospital. And then we immediately get the twist that Emma is the woman sitting in the apartment in New York City cleaning her closet. And she instantly confesses to us that she was the one who had killed the narrator, whose name we now learn is Ashley. And we had this little brief period where like she's having just read the diary and she's like, well, that's kind of how it went. She's like, I guess maybe you should take my account of events and Ashley's account of events and meet them in the middle. <laughs> you can get something close to the truth. 
So then we get a recount of events from Emma's point of view. So we learn that, yes, her brother was a suspect in the murder of the girl who got killed at the end of the summer. And her and her brother concoct a plan where they're going to invite this American girl to their house for Christmas and they're going to kill her. And Adam's like, actually, you're going to kill her because I can't be in town because I need to be far away. And then they will think those two murders are connected and everything will be fine. Because as we learn in the book, it's 1989, as I mentioned, and DNA evidence is just now becoming a thing. And Adam's like, they're going to nail me for this. I can't go to prison. <laughs> so Emma, who loves her twin brother very much, but who deep down has this, like, has a, has it long had a suspicion that he's got a really dark side to him. You know, he's still her twin. She doesn't want him to go to jail. So they, they have the plan. And Adam's like, let's make her last week. Great. We're going to take her to the best dinners. I'm going to kiss her, make her think I like her. We're going to buy her presents. We're going to give her a whole lifetime's worth in a week. And I was like, okay. <laughs> anyway, she agrees to it. So then that Christmas Eve when they're walking home, it's Emma who attacks Ashley. And then Emma sort of like beats her knuckles up with the rocks and stuff. And... Um, then she's like, she doesn't know how to whack herself in the head hard enough. Because, like, your body won't let you do that, right? So she starts throwing rocks up into the air, hoping one will hit her hard enough. It will knock her out. Um, which I guess would work, I guess. <laughs> and it does work for her. So um, she wakes up in the hospital, finds out her friend was dead. And all of that. So... Once she's done healing, she decides that she's getting out of here. She's like, I can't live with these people anymore. She despises her parents. She's over her brother at this point. Like, she's, she doesn't, she wants to be free of all of their shackles to her. So first she decides she's going to go to Italy. But then her brother gives her Ashley's belongings, her passport, her diary, all those things. And when... Emma's sitting down and looking at the passport, she realizes that not only did Ashley bear a striking resemblance to the girl who was murdered, but both of those girls bore a striking resemblance to Emma herself. So you kind of get the feeling that Adam's got to type for who he likes, y'all. <laughs> anyway, this was the part I thought was a little... I was kind of like, really? So... Emma takes Ashley's passport and is able to successfully fly out of the country and back to America and kind of um, step into her life, like use her identity to carve a life for herself because, like we mentioned, Ashley had no family. And the more that I'm thinking about it, at first I was like, there's no way it'd be that easy to do that. But you know what? It was 1989. Airport security was not like it is now. Maybe it would have been very possible to do that. I don't know. So, yeah, so now she's been living in America for 30 years. She's 50 now, and every so often she pulls that diary out and she reads it. And we learn that she works in a, um, for like a nonprofit raising money for violent crimes because, you know, of what she did in her past. And she says, you know, I've made peace with it because I did what I had to do to protect my brother. Um, and, you know, I can't change it. And we learned that Adam, who she hasn't seen in these 30 years, has become a prominent politician back in England. <laughs> and um, so Christmas Eve comes around when she had declined invitations to go out. She wanted to stay home. And she runs out to get food or something, and she comes back and um, she sees the ghost of the original Ashley, the girl who she killed. And she talks to us about how um, every Christmas Eve she sees her and she's like my cat sees her She's clear as day her spirit is here and she talks to her every year and I kind of liked that Ending I, I did some people probably aren't gonna like it, but I did something You know fitting about having the literal ghost story part come in at the end for a Christmas thriller slash mystery, you know Christmas is um, a good time for ghosts, as it says right at the very end of the book. And, um, because of course, you know, we've got Christmas Carol with the three ghosts that come and visit him 
on Christmas Eve, so it's kind of a nod to that. And then of course, you know, like I didn't realize, I've mentioned this on my channel before, so you probably already heard me say it, but I didn't realize until, um, you know, I was a teenager, that Christmas song that says, there'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmas is long, long ago. I didn't realize that like telling ghost stories had been part of Christmas tradition years and years ago. Who knew? <laughs> so yes, that is The Christmas Guest <laughs> by Peter Swanson. Um, I'd recommend it. I think I'm going to give it four stars. I really did enjoy it and I loved that ending. But like I said, it's not going to be for everyone that ending. Some people are going to be frustrated by it, but I loved it. So there you go. Let me know in the comments down below. Have you read this book? Have you read other Peter Swanson books? Would you recommend them? <laughs> and um, that's going to do it for me for tonight. But I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.